Today, let's talk about realistic fever materials, how to apply PBR textures, and clarify one very important question. What is a transfer function? In this video, I will show you a simple step-by-step -step workflow to create realistic materials in V-Ray 6 for SketchUp. The idea is to clarify anything that is different in V-Ray 6, as well as to show you something a little more practical. And before we continue, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. This is the easiest way to support the growth of the channel, and so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. One of the good things about PBR materials is that they are consistent under different lighting conditions, and this is due to the textures that are optimizing its composition. Now when you're searching or looking for PBR materials, these are the textures you should be looking for. Diffuse, ambient occlusion, opacity, specular, roughness and glossiness, metalness, bump, normal, and displacement. You want to make sure these textures are of decent resolution, and lastly make sure that they're seamless meaning they could be repeated as many times as needed without any breaks. So we're going to get started with this detailed wooden floor material. This set of textures is from Upstairs PBR Texture Pack Volume 1, which has a combined 25 PBR materials in 4K resolution. A huge thanks to Oliver from Upstairs for letting us test this pack, and for those that are interested, the link will be in the description. So let's start by creating a generic material. Remember to always name your materials to keep things organized. And let's load our diffuse texture. The diffuse texture stores color information and definition on the surface of our object. In our case, this is our diffuse texture. You can clearly see the color information, plank patterns, and wood grain on the boards. So let's click on our diffuse slot, select bitmap, and load our diffuse texture here. So here's something that's different in V-Ray 6. In previous version, we used to set each texture on different color space settings. So it would either be sRGB or linear. Now while that hasn't changed much, the term color space has been replaced with the term transfer function, which is actually the correct term since we're changing the gamma curve applied to the texture. Now because our diffuse texture stores color information, we're going to set this to sRGB. As for the primaries, you can select between raw or sRGB. I didn't notice much of a difference, but I'll leave it to sRGB so we stay in the correct color space. And this is the preview with only our diffuse texture. Next, we have our reflection settings. Now the textures used here are grayscaled versions of the diffuse texture. And the information on these textures control the reflectivity of the material. The white values will show maximum reflectivity and the black values will show the least reflectivity. Now to activate the reflections, you simply adjust the slider of the reflection color from black to white. And with this, you will get a uniform reflection that is flat across the entire surface. Here's a quick test of how a checkers with black and white squares affect the reflections on the material. So once again, let's load a bitmap into our slot and select our texture. As for the transfer function, you want to set this to linear. Since the terms are a little different here, simply select none from the options and leave the primaries to raw. So here is a preview of our material with the diffuse and specular. We now have two textures set in two different color space, and at this point, it's good to remember a good rule of thumb. All the textures that have color information are best set to sRGB. 
This is likely going to be your diffuse, so the colors are displayed the best way they're intended to. As for all your other textures, also including your normal map, they are best set in the linear function. So make sure your transfer function is set to none and the primaries to raw. If we follow this simple rule, the rest of the texture should be pretty simple. As for the glossiness or sometimes roughness, this setting controls the sharpness of the reflections. So this is what you use if you want to get mapped reflections. This is also one of the settings you want to use to add material imperfection. So if you wish to add scratches, dusts, or other particles, you can do so in this setting. Also keep in mind that glossiness and roughness maps will give you the same result at opposite ends. With the surface control on roughness setting, notice how you will get the sharpest reflections with a value of 0 and a matte surface with a value of 1. And as you switch the surface control to glossiness, you will get the opposite result. Sharp reflections with a value of 1 and a matte surface with a value of 0. So in the case of our roughness texture, everything is calculated through the black and white pixels in the image. So here we're going to load our roughness texture in the linear transfer function. As you can see, our texture is not quite displaying the way we want it to. So make sure you always change the surface controls according to the texture you're using. So in our case, roughness. So here is the result of our roughness texture. To add surface imperfections, you want to mix the roughness texture inside the mix operator. Load your imperfection texture. Use the non-transfer function. And choose the right mixing mode so the textures blend well together. Next, we have the settings for our bump and normal map. The bump map will give the illusion of bumps and dents in the vertical axis based on the grayscale pixels in the image. While the normal map will give you the illusion of bumps in the X, Y, Z axis because of the RGB pixels in the image. So I would prefer the normal map over the bump map and the higher the resolution for both, the better. So we're going to load a normal map, change this mode to normal, and we're going to load our texture in linear transfer function. So be sure to change this option to none and primaries to raw. And if the strength of the normal map is a little too strong, make sure to adjust the amount to a lower value. So here are the results of our normal map. As you can see, very subtle results. However, when you add everything in, we're getting pretty close to realistic material. Last, we have the displacement, and unlike the normal or bump texture, the displacement actually changes the geometry of the mesh based on our texture. So the white values will displace the mesh up, and the black values will displace the mesh down. And it produces much better results when it's hit by light. To add displacement, you can do one of two ways. Make sure that your face or object is a group, and you can add displacement as a V-Ray object by clicking this icon, Or inside your material, you can add displacement from the attributes option. So just like all other textures, we're going to load bitmap on our slot and load our displacement texture. Chances are the displacement effect will always be too strong to so make sure to always reduce this value. So here is our result have our roughness and imperfections with normal map we've added a light displacement these are all the layers coming together for our final material hopefully you can see that creating pbr materials in v-ray is actually very simple and it makes a very big difference in the realism of your renders just remember to use high quality textures make sure that they're seamless and use the tips in this video to get your materials right and if you're looking for some V-Ray lighting tips, make sure you check out this next video. As always, be sure to follow us on other social media platforms and I'll see you guys 
next time.